Like most endeavours, there are diminishing returns when it comes to lifting for muscle growth. Putting in a little time and effort can yield big results. But doubling your time and effort doesn't double your results, it may only produce a small additional benefit. And the more time and effort we put into lifting, the less additional gains we obtain. And the amount of effort we decide to dedicate to training depends on the individual. Someone who just wants to lift for general health and function may prefer to put in less total time and effort while still achieving everything they need from lifting. Whereas someone who wants to maximise muscle growth at all costs may decide it is worth putting in far more time and effort even if it only yields small additional gains. So how do we train for either of these purposes? Whether we want to maximise time efficiency in the gym or to maximise muscle growth at all costs. Before we explore how to train for either maximal muscle growth or maximal time efficiency, let's quickly define what exactly time efficiency means. Essentially, this refers to the amount of stimulus we can provide within a given duration of training. So there are two components of time efficiency, the hypertrophic stimulus and training time. So we can improve time efficiency by reducing our total training duration either within a session or throughout the entire week. It could also be improved by increasing the hypertrophic stimulus we provide within the same session duration. Or it could be a combination of both increasing the hypertrophic stimulus within a shorter duration. The reason this is relevant for us is because we don't have infinite time and energy to train throughout the week. Most people have other commitments and activities in their lives which are more important than lifting. Many people simply want to achieve good results without training taking too much of their time and energy throughout the week. So for these people, time efficiency is going to be a high priority. The first variable which can influence training time is volume. This refers to the total number of sets each muscle group is trained with per week. Obviously, performing more total sets within a training session, and throughout the week for that matter, will increase how much time we spend training. But how does volume influence muscle growth? The best evidence we have comes from this meta-regression, which found that training a muscle with more volume typically results in superior muscle growth. However, there seems to be somewhat of a diminishing returns response, with more volume resulting in slightly less additional growth. So if you want to get a good hypertrophic stimulus in minimal time, then training a muscle group with less than 10 sets per week is recommended. If you want to achieve a very good stimulus, then I'd recommend training relevant muscle groups with around 10 to 15 sets per week. And if there are muscle groups you want to maximise growth for, training them with 20 or even more sets per week may be necessary. The other variable which has a major influence on time spent lifting is rest periods. Longer rest periods obviously increase time spent lifting, while shorter rest periods allow workouts to be completed in a shorter duration. In fact, most typical hypertrophy style workouts usually involve actual lifting for only a small fraction of the total workout duration with the rest of the time spent resting. For example, a hypertrophy style workout involving 20 total sets, assuming each set takes approximately 30 seconds to complete, would involve lifting for only 10 minutes total. And if we were to rest 2 minutes between sets, then the total resting duration would be 40 minutes for a total workout duration of 50 minutes. But how do rest periods influence muscle growth? Do we need to spend more time resting for superior growth, or can we cut down on rest periods to save on time? The best evidence we have comes from this meta-analysis, which found that the overall body of evidence finds that significant muscle growth is able to be achieved with both short and longer rest period durations. However, moderate and longer rest periods seem to be a little more effective, probably because they allow more recovery time for superior lifting performance on subsequent sets. So if you want to maximise time efficiency, then shorter rest periods of one minute or less are recommended. This may slightly compromise the hypertrophic stimulus, but it also allows workouts to be completed in a significantly shorter duration. This may also allow more total sets to be completed within a workout, potentially resulting in a superior hypertrophic stimulus. But if you want to maximise the per set hypertrophic stimulus, then resting for slightly longer between sets is recommended, around 2-3 to three minutes or so. A subcategory of rest periods in this case are metabolite techniques. This refers to training techniques which generally utilise short rest periods to promote high acute fatigue. And because of the short rest periods, they can be a highly time efficient way to train for muscle growth. 
For example, this study compared the effects of performing bicep curls with either 3 sets to failure at 80% 1RM, 3 sets to failure at 30% 1RM, or 1 set at 80% 1RM to failure, followed immediately by 4 additional drop sets with a 10-15% to decrease in load, with all drop sets also taken to failure. It was found that biceps cross-sectional area increased similarly in all three conditions, with no notable differences between them. However, the drop sets were completed in a much shorter duration compared with the other two traditional training strategies. So, while metabolite techniques, and shorter rest periods in general, may not be quite as effective on a per set basis, they can make up for it through more sets. And even when more sets are performed, they are usually able to be completed within a shorter duration compared with traditional training. The next variable which can influence time efficiency is exercise selection. The exercises we implement in a training routine don't necessarily have a direct impact on time efficiency themselves, but they can have an indirect impact via their influence on rest periods. Some exercises simply require more time to rest and recover between sets. Generally, these are compound free weight exercises, such as squat, deadlift, and pull-up variations. These exercises are simply more globally fatiguing. They fatigue more total musculature, promote more cardiorespiratory fatigue, and require more psychological arousal to perform. Whereas other exercises can be effectively performed with less rest. Generally, these are mostly isolation or machine-based exercises, such as tricep pushdowns, hamstring curls, and lateral raises. These exercises are less globally fatiguing, but still effectively train the target muscles. They involve less total musculature, less cardiorespiratory fatigue, and less psychological arousal to perform. So if we were to perform a workout consisting of mostly high fatigue exercises, we may need around 2-3 to three minutes to rest between sets just to catch our breath and be psychologically ready for the next set. In this example, the session would last around 50 minutes assuming 3 sets are performed per exercise and each set takes approximately 30 seconds to complete. Whereas a workout consisting of less fatiguing exercises can probably involve 1-2 to two minutes rest periods for most exercises. In this example, the session would last around 36 minutes with the same number of sets. Another way in which exercise selection could influence time efficiency is via the use of unilateral versus bilateral exercises. Unilateral exercises are single limb movements where only one arm or leg works at a time. Some examples include single arm dumbbell rows, cable lateral raises, split squat variations, and single leg calf raises. In many cases, unilateral exercises can increase workout duration. You essentially need to perform double the number of sets for each unilateral exercise, which may require more time to complete. Although this does depend on the specific exercise too. More fatiguing unilateral exercises such as split squats usually require some amount of rest after each leg performs a set. In this case, it would require far longer to complete multiple sets of this exercise compared with a bilateral variation. Whereas less fatiguing exercises such as single leg standing calf raises can be performed by alternating between legs so that one leg works while the other rests. So in this case, the time it takes to complete multiple sets would probably be similar to that of a bilateral exercise. And the last variable worth mentioning here is proximity to failure. How close each set is taken to failure doesn't really influence our workout duration to any meaningful extent. Whether a set is taken to failure or a few reps are left in the tank, the time difference will probably only accumulate to around a minute or two throughout the course of a whole workout. However, our proximity to failure can influence muscle growth to a more meaningful magnitude. In general, training closer to failure typically results in greater muscle growth. This was established in this meta-regression, which found that training closer to failure generally produces more muscle growth. So, if you were trying to maximize muscle growth, then you probably want to take most sets pretty close to failure, around 0-2 to two reps in reserve for the most part. We probably also want to train to a similar proximity to failure for the purposes of time efficiency. This is because training close to failure can make each set more stimulative without necessarily increasing session duration. So this still has a net positive effect for the purposes of time efficiency.
In summary, here are some practical recommendations for those who want to either maximize muscle growth at all costs and those who want to maximize time efficiency. To maximize muscle growth, we probably want to train in the following ways. Take each set close to failure, around 0 to 2 reps in reserve for most exercises. Train the muscles you want to maximize development for with up to 20 or more sets per week. And implement moderate to longer rest periods of at least 2 minutes between sets. Alternatively, to maximize time efficiency, we probably want to train slightly differently. Take each set close to failure too, around 0 to 2 reps in reserve for most exercises. Train each muscle group with 10 or fewer total sets per week. Limit rest periods to less than 2 minutes between exercises. Select mostly low fatigue exercises and limit the use of unilateral exercises to limit rest period requirements between sets. And implement some metabolite training techniques such as drop sets or myo reps for exercises where it makes sense to do so. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.